In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen here from the paper one of the Ordinary Level Leaving Cert 2004. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, there should be a link to the playlist in the description below. Now, I'll be doing this on a whiteboard, hopefully just like you're used to your teacher doing in the classroom. But remember, this isn't the classroom, you're on YouTube, so take advantage of those tools pause the video, rewind, fast forward, or slow it down if I'm talking too fast. If you find this video useful or any of my other videos, I would appreciate a like or a subscribe. And what helps out the channel the most is sharing it with someone else who could be doing the Leaving Cert. Okay, in question five, part A, they give us this equation here and simply ask us to, what's the value of this if X is equal to two? It might look a bit complicated, but they're just saying, put x equals two and tell me what this is equal to. And they even give you a clue. They say your, the answer will be a fraction, a divided by b, where a and b are natural numbers. So the answer is gonna be a fraction. So let's just go ahead and put two in. Let's rewrite it. Three times two plus five over 10 minus one over two plus three. Let's clean this up as much as we can. Three times two is six. 6 plus 5 is 11 over 10 minus 1 over 5. Now, good news is your calculator, in fact, up here, your calculator would do it. Most people's calculators now will give you a fraction as an answer. But still, let's, uh, let's do this. How do we add or take away two fractions? You could cross multiply, but uh, you don't have to do that. We can just find a common, lowest common denominator and 10. Both of these go into 10. 10 goes into 10, five goes into 10. So let's change this guy to 10. Multiply it by two. Well, and we better be fair and even. Multiply the top by two. That becomes 11 over 10 minus two over 10, which is equal to nine over 10. 11 tenths, take away two of those tenths. We're left with nine tenths. And that's the answer to part A. But again, your calculator, you put this one, put one of these in your calculator and you would get the answer. Make sure to write something out though. Uh, give the examiner something to mark. Okay, in part B, they give us a function f. fx is equal to five x squared minus 20 x plus two. And they tell us to use calculus to find the coordinates of the local minimum point of fx. Now, um, when you hear calculus, you should be thinking differentiation. Uh, also, when you hear minimum or maximum, you should be thinking differentiation. Uh, specifically, differentiation equals zero at the minimum and the maximum. So, differentiation, you should be thinking dy dx. Now, there's no y here. Uh, you, you can go ahead and replace fx with a y, or gx later in this question. Um, or you can, instead of f, uh, dy dx, you can also write f prime. That's the same. It's the, the, both mean the same thing. And either way, in this case, they will equal zero at a minimum. So that's, you're getting a lot of marks for writing equal zero here. Um, because you need to remember that a local minimum happens when the derivative equals zero. So let's find the derivative of here. Let's, I'll stick with f prime here. The derivative of fx. So what's the derivative? Uh, the power, x to the power of two. This two multiplies by the five and it gets 10. And we take one away from this, x to the power of one. You don't have to write the one in. Okay, there's a one up here, um, one times 20, or minus 20, it's minus 20, and we take one away from this x, uh, that's x to the power of zero, which we don't have to write in. And then finally, um, two disappears, or you can think of x to the power of zero is here, zero times two is zero, it's, it's gone, it's gone. It's, that's your answer here, but this equals zero, because of the minimum. We know this is equal zero because we're looking for the minimum point. So we solve this, uh, add 20 to both sides, we get two, uh, 10x is equal to 20. Uh, divide 10 by so both sides, we get x is equal to two. You're nearly there, they wanted the point, they wanted the coordinates, they want x and y. We know what x is, we need to know what y is. Um, remember, y is the same as fx, it's just the answer to the function. When we put in x, y comes out, or that, that's another way of saying it. Um, so what is y? y is equal five times 
2. Remember, we know x at this point. At y, we know x. So 2 squared, 2 squared, minus 20 times 2, plus 2. That's what y is equal. That's 20, sorry, that's uh, 4 times uh, 5, which is 20, minus 40, plus 2. That's minus 20, minus 18. Minus 18. So there's your full marks. Uh, you can write the point like this, so that should be an 18. Or you can write x equals 2 and y equals this. That gets you full marks for part b. In part 3, they give us a function, they call it gx, and they say it's a linear function. Now that, that's just a fancy way to say it's a line. This guy is a line here. And uh, then they ask us to use the graph to find the rate of change. Um, of gx and then they clarify they say that's that's just like finding g dash x which is the derivative the rate to change the derivative they're the same there's one other thing that's the same that they didn't say because it'd be a bit easier the slope the slope the rate to change the derivative they're all the same and um, so really what they're asking to do is find the slope of this so how do you find the slope um I find the way most students like to do it, is it's the slightly longer way, is to find two points. And this does have two points uh, that's quite nice. This one here is 0, 1. And uh, I think the other one that lines up is 3, 3. 3, 3. There, there's two points on the equation. You can use the slope formula, find the answer there. You'll get the full marks. You, that's a perfectly okay way to do it. Uh, slightly better is just to look for a triangle which like any triangle on this uh, on this and you get the height by the, the the length the rise by the run that gives you the slope this triangle is the easiest again because you want whole numbers how tall is this it starts at one high and it goes to three high it must be let's draw it again over here sorry a bit crooked it's too tall <laughs> it's it it's two units tall and how long is it? It starts at zero, goes all the way to three. Zero to three. It's three long. So the slope of this line is its height divided by its width. Its slope, or g dash x, is just two divided by three. Just be slightly careful. It, you have to decide if it's going up or down. Is it positive or negative? So this one's always read left to right, so it's going up. So this is positive, so it's a plus. But if it was going down, we'd get we'd get something like, for example, we'd get uh, two, three. This would be two divided by three as well, but minus, because it's going down. Hopefully, I, you didn't need this extra bit, by the way, the full marks are up here. Uh, they wanted the answer to look like this, A divided by B, where A and B are both natural numbers. That's, uh, that's full marks for part C. And uh, that's everything in this question, I think. Uh, yeah. Um, so thank you for watching um, and have a great day.